heard, what they saw. Among them, Micaiah, Ezekiel, even in the Christian era, the man Stephen. Micaiah, we are told, in 2 Chronicles 18, 18, he said that he saw God sitting in his heavenly throne and that the hosts of heaven were standing, some by his right hand, some by his left hand. If he's not a person, he could not have had hand by which can be identified that some were standing by his right hand, some by his left hand. Ezekiel the prophet, in Ezekiel 1, from verse 26 to 28, declared how he saw the vision of God and saw God sitting on his throne, having the appearance of a man, that from his loins upwards and from his loins downwards was as bright as fire. Well, if God is not a person, he could not have had these parts of body. Then in the case of Stephen, as we are told, in Acts chapter 7, verse 55 and 56, there Stephen fell in a trance and he saw the vision of God and said that he saw Jesus Christ standing by the right hand of God. What more evidence do we need? So we can see from all this that indeed God is a person. He's the personality of highest order. Some people sometimes cite John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is true. That God is a spirit does not rule out the fact that he is a person. Rather, what the writer was saying there was to let us know that the almighty God belonged to the spirit world. And Apostle Paul went further to explain this in 1 Corinthians 15. If we read verse 40 and 44, there he explained that there are two types of body. Body celestial or spiritual body. Then body terrestrial or the natural body. The almighty God, his son Jesus Christ, the angels, the saints, they possess the spiritual body, otherwise called celestial body. And human beings on earth have the terrestrial body, which is the natural body. And God has shown through the Bible, using Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 24 verse 39, and Apostle Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 49 and 50, that spirit beings don't have blood, flesh, and bones. That is the difference. Otherwise, they are all bodies. Celestial body, terrestrial body. I'm talking about his shape. Jesus Christ said to the Jews, according to the book of John chapter 5, verse 37, that one of the points is that the Jews have not seen God at any time. Or see his shape. In other words, he has shape. He has face. The point is that they've not seen him because he's a spirit being. And he said so to Moses in Exodus chapter 33, verse 20. But that no man can see my face and live. The Almighty God also has a dwelling place. He lives in Mount Zion above. The psalmist said in Psalm 11, verse 4. That the Lord is in his holy temple. That the Lord's throne is in heaven. So he's in the heavens. Overseeing what is going on all over the world. Talking about his attributes. He has four qualities which are his likeness in man. But man's own being finite, the devil has corrupted them. God's qualities are infinite. And God uses them several ways. There are wisdom, power, justice, and love. By his wisdom and power, he created the heavens and the earth, and all good things they are in, both visible and invisible. If we read the book of Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12. With his power, he destroyed the first world when it was full of sin, with deluge, and delivered the man Noah and his family of seven. Noah making them eight. He used his power also when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, when those twin sister cities of sin were full of different crimes, making them example for those that should live after. But he delivered Lot and his two daughters. God also exercised his power when he destroyed Pharaoh and the Egyptians in the Red Sea and made the Jews to pass through the dry land or to cross the Red Sea on the dry land. He has also promised to make use of his power at this age of the end of the world when he will destroy Satan the devil 
and all form of wickedness and rid the wall of sin and deliver the righteous. The Almighty God exercised justice when he sentenced Adam to death, when Adam violated his just law in the Garden of Eden. Then God also used his attribute love. He exercised it by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and shed his blood and redeem man from sin and death. Jesus Christ himself said in John 3 verse 16, that for God so loved the world and he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. According to the Bible, the knowledge of God is very, very important for salvation. Jesus Christ said so in John 17 verse 3. For this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In other words, for any man or woman to worship God and have eternal life in the end, he must have accurate knowledge of God Almighty and his son Jesus Christ. I have been able, by the grace of God, to answer the question, who is God? I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. <laughs> Brothers, sisters, and friends, our viewers at home, from all we've been able to say so far on the subject who is God, it is clear that indeed the Almighty God is worthy of worship. He created us. He created everything. There is indeed the need for men and women to worship him. At this stage, we will rise for benediction. We thank thee, O gracious and most loving Father, Jehovah, the God of gods and the Lord of lords, who hath enabled us to discharge our duties today as regards the sermon just preached. May he please the Almighty Father to help us that all that we've heard here may find place in us, so that we will live to serve thee in the way pleasing unto thee at all times for our blessing and salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Jehovah and Jesus Christ. Amen.